Hello and welcome everybody to the Transplant Video User Training Tutorials. Today about our resources for read genomic data. My name is Manuel Spanagel from the Helmholtz Center in Munich. And if you want to find out more about the Transplant Project, please visit our website. Here is an overview about the individual topics that I'll be talking about today. If you are interested in a specific chapter, you may just jump to the corresponding time point given here. What makes the genome of breadweed so challenging to analyze and also to handle is its genome size of about 17 gigabases combined with a high repeat content and it's also ALO hexaploid. And in 2014, the IWGSC released a draft sequence of the genome, which is mainly subject of this tutorial. So this user training should help you to mine, integrate and interpret the heterogeneous read data um, that is coming from the various data so bases and resources. And our starting point today is an unknown transcript sequence from read, for which we want to find out as much as possible. For example, identify the putative gene model and the uh, subgenome origin as well as the homologous read genes. So in our first task, we want to identify genome databases and resources that are hosting genome data from read. And for that, we use the Transplant uh, Genome Resources Registry. You can access it at the Transplant homepage. And when we search with our keyword read, the result consists of a number of databases and resources hosting genome data from read, not only from transplant partners, and the result can be filtered by, for example, keywords, species, common name, tools, and so on. By clicking one of the results, you get a number of details about that resource, for example, tools that are available and also the website. The Transplant Registry currently consists of over 300 different uh, resources and databases for many plant genomes and we are updating the registry on a regular basis. Here we identified a ensemble plant instance for the breadweed genome and by clicking it you get a number of additional details. In the next chapter we want to use BLAST to identify similar sequences in the breadweed genome for an unknown sequence that we have. And for that we are using the BLAST server at PGSP PlantsDB. And that's the unknown sequence that we want to search for in the read genome. We are pasting that sequence in the box in fast A format. Then we are selecting the database that we are, want to search for. In that case, it's the breadweed uh, CDS sequence. And we are adjusting the E value that we want to search for and the maximum target sequences. And then press submit. And after a while, which is actually a bit longer than our example here, we are getting back our results. Here's a visual representation of the results and above you can also uh, sort your results by percent identity. You can download the BLAST results on the button down there. And I also want to show you briefly the BLAST server instance that is hosted by URGI at the IWGSC official sequence repository. Again, you can paste in your sequence uh, in fast A format here. Select your BLAST tool. And here you have a great choice of different uh, sequence databases that you can choose from. For example, markers, the reference sequence of 3B, low coverage 454 data for individual chromosome arms, and also the other species like Charonensis, Bertoides, and so on. And down there you can adjust your BLAST parameters like threshold, word size, and so on. In the next section, I want to show you how to retrieve details about an individual read gene model and for that we are using the Ensemble Plants Genome Database. You of course can access Ensemble Plants directly or also from the BLAST results from the previous section just by clicking the gene model name 
and then you end up at the ensemble plants transcript page where you get a summary you can click the gene report you have a visual representation of the gene model and now we are navigating to the gene view in ensemble plants where you have the ensemble plants uh, browser visualization and in the menu on the left you have a number of additional features such as sequence, the gene ontology terms for that gene model, here for molecular function category. You also find all the results from the plant compare pipeline, we'll come to that later. And you can have a look at the sequence, where the orange parts are all the exonic regions. And finally, we're going to have a look at the splice variants, for which also the domains like PFAM, Panther, and so on are visualized here. And in the next part of our tutorial, we will have a look on the weed subgenome origin of our sequence and also the gene relationships of homologous weed genes. For that, we are using the Osomo Plants database once again. On the menu on the left, you find the results from the plant comparer pipeline, including the author logs, which we will have another look now. So, as you can see, for our weed gene, we identify a number of different author logs in different species. You can browse them on the table here. We're going to have one more look at the paradox or within the species and also on the homologs. which we find here. So you can have a look on the protein alignments of the, all the homologs, for example, to inspect the sequence similarity a little bit in more detail. And now we are going to have a look onto the gene tree, which is a very useful tool to visualize and inspect the relationships between the orthologous, paralogous and homologous genes takes a few moments to load and that gene tree will be a great tool to analyze and explore the phylogenetic environment of the gene that we are looking at, the weed gene. So if you scroll down, in red you have the weed gene that we are looking at and by clicking on these triangles you can expand the subtree. So this one here for example consists of two more homologs of our gene of interest. The blue color text represents paradox of our gene of interest and the color of the nodes corresponds to the type of the node, for example a speciation node or a duplication node. And there is actually a number of cool things you can do in that tree, for example download the sequence for the genes in the subtree and on the right hand side you find the sequence alignments. And in the next part of our tutorial, we want to identify the putative gene location of our gene on the weed genome. And for that, we are first using the Genome Zipper, which is available from the PGSB PlantsDB website. So we are browsing there, selecting the Read Database instance. And here we find both the data overview for the Genome Zipper as well as a search function. For data overview, there is a representation of the different read chromosomes. And you can click into the chromosome to obtain the specific sector within the genome zipper. So you get the full information in that region of the genome zipper. And if you're interested in a specific genetic element, for example, a synthetic gene or so, like the paripodium gene here, you can use the search function in genome zipper. So now we are putting in the gene identifier of this paripodium gene and press search. And as a result, we find that Prohypodium gene in the genome zipper anchored to each of the three different subgenomes in read. To get some more details, you can follow the link to the genome zipper report. And if you want to have a look in the gene neighborhood of that genome zipper entry, we can just follow that link. And what we see now is in yellow the gene of interest and before and after the corresponding region in the genome zipper. 
And next I'm gonna show you where to find the popsec data which was generated at the IPK in Gattersleben. These links will bring you to the websites where you can both download the popsec datasets and access the corresponding publications to find out more about the method and how to use these data to find the location of a gene on the read genome. In the next part we will introduce the read physical map browser which is located at the URGI in Versailles and in that part comments are given as text and callouts. This next section will both introduce the Read3B Annotation JBrowse instance and the Read3B Mine Data Warehouse, both located at the URGI in Versailles. And in the next section we want to find out more about the variation data that is available for the bread wheat genome and for that we again use the Ensemble Plants bread wheat instance. We start this part with a keyword search for our gene identifier in bread wheat. We press go and that directs us to a gene report for that particular gene which provides a lot of information and details about that particular gene. And once again on the left hand side menu, you will also find the genetic variation information such as the variation table and the variation image that we want to inspect now. The variation image is basically a graphical representation of the variation data and the variants that are available within a specific region such as that of the gene that we are currently looking at. 
while the upper image provides the first overview, the lower panel shows the individual variants in more details, including their type and their consequence. The color is code for the individual type of the variant, for example, in-frame insertions, missense variants, synonymous variants, intron variants, and so on. If you want to find out more details about the variant, you just click on the color box and you receive additional information such as the precise locations, the alleles, and so on. There is also a second view available for the variation data, which is the variation table. This gives you a tabular overview about the variations within a gene. This table also provides a great overview about the consequences of a specific variant or all the variants that are annotated on the gene model. You, for example, hit this button to show all the synonymous variants that are annotated on that gene model. And here is the list of synonymous variants annotated in the region of that gene model. Where you can see, for example, the amino acid coordinates that is affected, as well as the affected alleles. And the same table can be obtained, for example, for missense variation and so on. And that can give you a really good overview about the different kinds of variations that are present in the gene model of your choice. And in the last part of our tutorial, I'm going to talk about how and where to download re-genome data as sometimes you want to run analysis locally and you need to download bulk data from the genome. And first we are looking at the URGI read resource, which is the official IWGSC sequence repository. And as you see on the left hand side menu, there is a number of different data types available. For example, assemblies, which includes the IWGSC service sequence chromosomes available for download and blast, as well as the other read species, for example, triticum monococcum, triticum durum, and so on. And if you click on the reference species, you will find data from the 3B reference sequence. You can download the pseudomolecule as well as the annotation. And if you want to download the IWGZ genes annotation, you will find that over here, as well as the genome zipper data for download and the popsec data that I showed you before. Physical maps, you will find the physical maps that we've discussed already. Transcriptome data is available as well as the RNA-seq data, available for download here. Variation data is also available for bulk download in VCF format. The data which was used in the publication by IWGSC in 2014 is available as a bulk download here, in an archive file. And if you want to keep yourself updated about news, just keep an eye on that page. Okay, and there is also a second resource which is more directed towards the gene annotation and the gene models, which is in the PGSB plants DB section. And here you'll find the latest read structure annotation as well as sequence files in different formats. And please have a look on the README files to get an overview about the file types and the content. In the main FTP download directory, there is also data available for the genome assembly, genome super popsec data, and so on. And please always make sure to read the README and the CiteMe file to get the latest information. If you have any questions on the resources and tools and databases that I've shown you today in the tutorial, please do not hesitate to contact us. Email addresses and help this contact is given here. So thank you very much for your interest in this read transplant user training video, and hope to see you next time. Bye bye.